and they draw the gas out. What happens to the water, for example, in New York, where there um, are millions of people, obviously, who rely on the reservoirs upstate? Well, right now, there are almost no natural gas wells in the Catskills region, literally a handful. But that area does have Marcella shale. So if they begin to drill in that area, and if they cause the same kinds of uncontrolled pollution problems that other areas of New York have experienced, notably western New York, then the drinking water could be impacted. And once these problems develop, they're very difficult to clean up. And you have states all over this country, of course, that are in dire economic shape. And so they are going to turn to any way they can make money. Is New York in that situation? And what are you doing right now? New York, unfortunately, in the southern tier, in the Finger Lakes region in western New York, is in dire economic straits. These communities are just desperate for jobs. And so it sounds so good. We're going to get this gas out. We're going to make tons of money. Communities are going to benefit. The state of New York is going to benefit. Governor David Patterson has basically made this Marcella Shale effort the linchpin of his economic development plan. The problem is he hasn't answered those key questions. What happens when hundreds and hundreds of these 100,000 ton trucks start pounding these structurally deficient bridges that have been neglected for decades into pieces? Who's going to pay for that? What about the roadways that are going to get destroyed? What are we going to do with all of this toxic wastewater? Believe it or not, they were actually dumping this natural gas drilling wastewater from a vertical well in Little Cuga Heights, New York. And it was passing through this sanitary wastewater treatment plant that was not designed, constructed, or maintained in any way to take out the toxics. And it was passing through into southern Cuga Lake, which is a nationally recognized impaired water body. It's already been polluted for decades. And this added to the problems, and 30,000 people drink water from that area. So we're looking at an impending disaster. And that's how come we're going to now try to organize all these communities to say this has to be done properly. There's one public hearing today. That's right. In the city of New York, they're going to talk about the threat to the reservoirs. And so that's how come I'm here in New York. I'm going to talk to the Department of Environment and Conservation about these concerns. And I've posted at ToxicsTargeting.com the 270 profiles, people can look at them and see, are there any major problems in my community in, in the Marcellus Shale region of New York? But then we're going to have a coalition letter that people can sign on to and basically say, Governor Patterson, we're just not ready to go forward with Marcellus Shale um, um, drilling until we get these regulations. Don't do it. Withdraw this proposed supplemental generic environmental impact statement. Uh, we only have 30 seconds, but the significance of the New York watershed, um, fresh water, uh, how it comes into the city, how unusual it is in this country. It's absolutely unique. You have these upland reservoirs hundreds of miles away from the city, and the water flows completely under gravity through these giant tunnels. It's so pure, it doesn't even need to be filtered. And so this is a jewel. Any city in the world would give anything to have this water. That's why it has to be safeguarded. It has to be protected. Once it's polluted, then the city would have to treat that water at gargantuan cost. So Mayor Bloomberg and all the other city leaders have to unite with all the other New Yorkers who could be impacted by Marcella Shale. Walter Hank, thank you so much for being with us, president of Toxics Targeting, an environmental database from Manithica, New York. The one hearing today is taking place at Stuyvesant High School? Yes. Today at 5 o'clock? 6.30, actually. 6.30 in the evening. Uh, and we'll let people know what comes of that. Uh, this is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. When we come back, the end of poverty. And we'll be speaking with, well, a former economic hitman. That's right, John Perkins. Stay with us. How many roads must a man walk down before they call him a man? Yes, and how many seas must a white dove sail before she sleeps in the sand? Time. 
times bust the cannonballs fly before Many years can about 